Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki alongside University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz and my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. This week, the Hurricanes on the road. We haven't said that in a while. We'll be at Pittsburgh for a 12 o'clock kickoff from Heinz Field this past weekend. A heartbreaker in overtime. Uh, the Georgia Tech coach. And uh, again, the game playing a, a game in the house of close games. Little things added up, and it was a tough one uh, the way it went in overtime. Yeah, we didn't finish. You know, we had an opportunity, really two opportunities at the end of regulation uh, to win the game, and, and uh, it shouldn't have. I felt like it demoralized our guys. I don't, I don't, you know, we certainly didn't compete very hard on defense in the drive in overtime, and offensively still had a chance to win, and it came down to a review of a spot, and, and, and those are the inches that have been going against us this year. Uh, we realize probably better than anybody in the country the fine line between winning and losing, and, and it's in those inches, and those are the things that we as coaches have to do a better job of, of getting our players to – See that attention to detail that will get us back on the winning track. Mm -hmm. Coach, you talk about it in your post game with your team about how close every game is going to be, and we've found that out so far this season. But how do you convince them that they got to keep working, that the best is yet to come? Well, it's about laying the habits of the foundation of the program, which is really what this year has all been about. Um, does our team compete? You know, and I think the answer is after seven games, we do. You know, um, are we mentally tough? You know, if you look at the way we responded, you know, we, have, we had a bad first start. You know, they, they jump out with a defensive touchdown. Uh, from that point on, we take control of the game, you know. And, and um, so I think we can – I think we know we're resilient. <laughs> I think we know we can handle adversity. Um, what we need to do a better job of is not creating adversity for ourselves. Uh, I did talk to uh, David Feely earlier today, your strength and conditioning coach, and it occurred to me, well, before the team, for the most part, goes out in the practice field, they got to go through him. Right. And one of the ways to get your mind right – it's probably through him in the weight room. And uh, a guy that uh, you talk about training in the offseason for adversity, whether it's adversity in the fourth quarter or adversity during the season, well, this is when it all comes into play. Right, because the, the work demands that the work be done. And that, that's, this is beyond football. This is, we talk about this for, for life. Uh, no matter what the results are, you have to go back to work the next day and you have to work to your maximum potential. And that's true if you, you know, eventually these, these young men will all become grown men. They'll all have to feed a family one day. They'll have to pr provide for their wife and kids. And as we tell them, just because things are not going well in the short term doesn't mean that you throw your hands up in the air and, and, and quit. You know, and in fact, at times the answer is you have to work harder. And our, our guys are doing that. And that's the habits that are being built in our weight room with Coach Feely. And when you're on the field, Manny, the, the thing that comes back time and time again is you thought you played your best game. You thought you gave your all, but you really didn't. You, you never know what that next step is. It's convincing the players to constantly take the next step. Right. A true competitor um, always knows that that better game is out there. Mm -hmm. and, and no matter what happens, you pop the film on and you're watching and you just know that there's a better performance because you're always, you, you become obsessed with improvement. Like every day I want to find a way to get better. And, that, and, and you see that in, in lots of walks of life. And where does that happen? Let me go back to the weight room. What do you do every day in the weight room? I want to, I want to do whatever I did yesterday. If I did, if I did you know, eight reps of it, I want to do nine. If I did this weight, I want to add, add two and a half pounds to it. I, there's always a way in that weight room to push yourself to get better. And when you get obsessed with self-improvement, you have a whole team of guys like that. Then guess what the team does? The team improves. Uh, I did want to mention that uh, Quarterman made a million tackles in the game and had a uh, – take away strips, uh, recover the ball, look like it was going to be the game-changing play. And Lewis Headley, who's pointed very well for you all year long, he, he showed some finesse also this week. He dropped the ball yeah. inside the five-yard line, I don't know, two or three times. Shaq Corbin may have played his best game in Miami, and that's, that's a mouthful because he's played a lot. But he, he, he was that senior that says, this is not going great, I'm going to go take this game over. And he about, he about did the forced fumble. He almost had a pick uh, on the next drive. And then, as you mentioned, Headley. But really, what's crazy is it, I know when we always say special teams, we think about place kicking. But if, if, you, if you take place kicking and put that over here, our special teams last Saturday was the best it's probably ever been. Um, we were dominant in punt. We were dominant in punt return with two massive returns by K.J. Osborne. Um, we did a great job on you know, covering all their kicks and, and had a couple opportunities. We, we, we returned a sky kick out to the 45-yard line. The, f the domination we had in field position in this game um, – you know, they start, I think, at their 19. We start, like, at our 38 was a big difference to – I mean, that, and that's what you want to start to show. You want to start to show a special teams unit that can create short fields for your offense and help us really take control of the game, in, which we should have better control in the game in the second quarter. 
Coach, Jimmy Murphy is not the University of Miami football team's mascot. I think he proved even more so on Saturday on what he does as a contributor to special teams. I don't know that I've seen consistently a guy cover like that ever. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I I said it when he scored against Bethune, he's not a Rudy story. I mean, mean, he's a dude, he's a player for us, and uh, he's a great player. And you can tell other teams' game plan for him. You know, they'll put two guys on him, you know, and, and covered and try he to beat it. That, and he beats it down there. It's, his, his effort and want to um, is, is off the charts, you know, and, and, and we're, we're, we're lucky to have him. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy to have on a team. Uh, DJ Dallas went out. You didn't miss a beat. Cameron Harris played the game that I think we've all been waiting for. A complete game. Ran the ball. Ran the ball hard. Caught a screen pass for a touchdown. Uh, did a really nice job for you. Yeah, Cam, you know, obviously we still miss DJ. He's, no he's question, the heart and soul no. of our offense. But Cam... You know, Cam had some bad luck. He had two great runs called back yeah. in the in the first two games, and so to ha- ha- see him have a good day um, will do a lot for his confidence. And it's a next man up deal at Miami, and uh, and Cam's got to be big for us the second half of the season. Coach, sack total against the Hurricanes was three. I want to clarify that doesn't necessarily mean it's all on the offensive sure, line, but I saw improvement out of your offensive line and also the use of John Campbell being in a, a guard. It seems like he's fitting into that spot as well. Yeah, John has good uh, positional flexibility in terms of being able to play inside or outside. I do feel like they played their best game of the year, um, probably right up with the North Carolina game. I, they, they are improving, but they're just starting to function more as a unit. Um, I think Corey Gaynor is still doing a, a phenomenal job of just being the, the leader of that group and making sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, Georgia Tech relied on a lot of pressure and movements to make a lot of negative plays, and I thought we handled that very well. Pitt comes up on Saturday. They lead the nation in sacks. They've won four in a row. They, too, are playing very close games. Yeah. Uh, three of their games are de- decided by a total of seven points. So right. uh, they're coming out on the other side, maybe a veteran team as well, but a uh, big challenge on Saturday. Yeah, 5-1 and one in games decided by 10 points or less, yeah. uh, Pitt is. So, yeah, but it's an ACC Coastal game, so, again, there's no reason not to expect that it's going to be tight regardless. Um, this is the best defense they've had since Pat Norduzzi has been there. They're, they're very active, averaging 5.1 sacks a game is an absurd number. We led the nation two years ago averaging 3.4 a game, so that shows you how they, they're, they're putting up some big numbers. Um, you know, Coach Narduzzi has always been a big pressure guy, and they will bring the pressure. They're going to challenge you with a lot of man coverage on the outside. So it's a great day for um, our wide receivers to try to make some plays down the field. And the one thing is that there's always a potential for explosive plays. Mm-hmm. You know, when, we, we've, when we've beaten Pitt two out of the last three years, um, and you think of Travis Homer breaking long runs, you know, last year, uh, you know, last year Kaya with a, with a bunch of big throws here in 2016. So th- th- it is a game where explosive plays will be of, of great importance. Coach, when you also think of Pitt, you think of the pressure that they put from all spots on the field. I think it's, it's one thing to talk about the sacks, but how they get the sack, right. maybe you can share with their philosophy on that as well. Yeah, so they're going to play, you know, their base defense, they're going to play press quarters, you know, so it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be man-to-man if, and bump and run on the outside. If you can beat it, there's some big plays available, um, but they're going to try to deny as many easy throws as they possibly can. Um, and then they're going to bring a bunch of six-man pressures. We're actually, we actually have some similarities in terms of the way that we pressure our defense and Pitt's defense. Um, and, and they just do a good job. And then it just comes down to being relentless, you know, which all good defenses have. I mean, they're just playing very hard, and they've, got some, they've, they've improved their athleticism on defense. And, and then they've, you know, they've just gotten into games where, as it happens, you start to get those early in the season, get your nose, you know, sense that blood in the water, and they've been doing a good job of that. All right, we'll uh, continue with University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Miami and Pitt on Saturday when we come back. The breakdown segment right here on the Manny Diaz Show. Okay, it's time for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, what do you have for us today? Your favorite day. (laughs) Is it Christmas? We're going to talk a little offensive line play. There we go. Uh, For two reasons. One, we know we're playing Pitt. Um, All the pressure they bring is going to be a great challenge for our guys up front. Uh, And then two, coming off this past game, you know, losing a guy like DJ Dallas running the game, you see Cam Harris running for all those yards. Uh, Cam did a great job at some of those holes that were being opened up for him, you know, so great strain. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Um, a little shotgun running game. We're going to run an outside, um, in essence, a sweep play. You're going to see Brevin Jordan's going to block down. Defensive end, John Campbell's blocking down. Corey Gannon's going to work up to the linebacker. And just great lean and great vibes. And watch John Campbell right here. Watch the punch and extension with his arms right there, right? That's the weight room telling, right? Brevin Jordan's got great strain right here. And then watch young Zion Nelson. Does a nice job. Right here, he's going to pull around Brevin and seal this linebacker right there. 
boom. And then and then you got to get up for the guys like Mark Pope. That's right. Blocking secondary on the perimeter. Cam sees, sees the, the cutback, puts a foot in the ground, gets north, you know what I mean, runs through contact, and there's an explosive run. So a lot of guys working together do a great job. And Coach, rarely do you see, especially this many at one time, where guys actually are turning, are able to pin the entire defensive line. No. You know that that's trouble from that side of the ball. There's no doubt. I mean, just, just great effort, great technique, great fundamentals. And we really feel like they're really – Starting, they're, they're they're getting it. They're, the the reps are starting to add up with each other, and and it's starting to make a difference. So again, same thing. We're coming down same drive, okay, and this is going to be a screen. And I think one thing that's really been fun to watch our offense grow this year is we've turned really into an elite screen team. We mm -hmm. really do a great job on screens. Um, a couple weeks in a row now, we scored a touchdown. Uh, Nick Coach does a great job set it up. See how his eyes are pointed away from the screen. Um, just to buy a couple of ticks of time right here. And then we're going to get Campbell and Gaynor out in front of the screen, which they do right there. This is a really athletic play by Corey Gaynor. Watch Corey as he get on the screen and has to circle back to get this linebacker who's trying to get to Cam right there. Once he does, now we got a chance. Got Brevin Jordan with a great block in the alley. We have John Campbell looking for somebody to block, which is a good thing. KJ Osborne's training, got, has his man on the ground. Corey Gaynor's got his man on the ground. And what a great way to help you know, facilitate easy offense, help. They, they're coming with it with a blitz, perfect. That takes one less defender away. And Cam Mayer is able to take it in for a touchdown. And in the screen game, it's so important for the offensive line not to let the defense know that it is a screen. It's right, a exactly sell job right. across the board. That's exactly right. Corey just does a nice job of just sort of stunting that guy just enough. Now Ja'Kai and, and, and DJ Scape over here, they're just running their normal pass protection. You know, Will Mallory's running a route to try to buy up the safety's eyes. And then, like I said, I think the other aspect is just the quarterback being very calm, making it look like a drop back pass, you know, looking towards the field and then settling in and throwing a good catchable ball. One last thing, Coach. He was on his back. I want to, I want to make sure we bring that up. He put the middle linebacker on his back. Oh, yeah. No, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. So I'm saying if you, if you look right now and, and, and just look at the, again, Brevin Jordan, yep. K.J. Osborne, you know, like I said, John Campbell, the guy that John Campbell would block was the guy that blitzed. So, you know, you got him free. He gets to be the first guy to go celebrate in the end zone for the touchdown. So, again, great job of the diversity. This is going to be another, a different type of running play. Mm -hmm. And, again, you see a lot of guys doing a great job of locking their man up. Okay? I mean, inside zone play. Okay, so, so these three guys right here are going to go block these three guys. These two on the backside are going to handle these two. And Brevin Jordan is going to block out on this backside defensive end. Cam Harris takes the football. You see where his pads are, are, are square to the line of scrimmage. So he can already see right now the cut, right? So the linebacker tries to spike in. Ja'Kai does a nice job of covering him up right there like this. Okay, DJ Scaife stays on his man. Getting good push right here. Navon Donaldson and Corey Gaynor see how they're creating separation. Well, when they create that separation, the defense has to fill that space. Mm -hmm. And as they fill that space, that's what allows cutback lanes to open. And that's why Brevin Jordan's block is so crucial on the backside. Does a great job. We got a big old hole right there. Cam's got a choice right here. Obviously, he can stick this thing north, you know, which we kind of like to see because the end zone isn't that way. It's right. not that way. However, you can see why KJ Osborne is trying to seal his man to the outside. And even if that's a one on one with the safety, that's a hard tackle defensively. Which, guess what? The guy gets in the hole, stops his feet. The defender's got this wrong foot forward. Cam's able to get to the sideline and then watch the second effort strain by KJ Osborne. Can't say enough. Look, I mean, what, look how look what he does with that guy. Can't say enough about the effort of KJ and how he plays. And we have another explosive run, well blocked, well executed. Coach, when you when you think about this, also when you look at this play, the effort that, that Cam has when he comes this way, and then the ability to see it—that's a vision play out of a back. That's something you look for when you're recruiting guys. It is, and and, that, and that's what I say. Like to me, we're we're, we're going to get more of this mm -hmm. as time goes on. You know. Um, but his ability to, to make a decisive moment right there and then, and then be able to turn the corner is big for us. Um, this is a big play right here. There's another big run, similar to what we just saw the time before, because this is the play after the Shaq Quarterman forced fumble recovery fumble. Mm -hmm. So you want that, it's that what we call a sudden change play. You want to come out and, and start a drive with a big play, right? And this is fourth quarter. This is our first snap on offense in the fourth quarter. We're going to run that same play we ran earlier, a, 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 a similar version of it. Okay, but now we're going to pull Navon Donaldson. Remember last time we pulled Zion. Brevin, instead of blocking down, is going to block out. So, again, let's start off with Brevin. 
bang, great job. Look how he runs his man out of the hole, okay? Zion Nelson is going to down block right here to seal this defensive tackle. She does a great job right there. Boom, he's got his arms locked out. See how his feet never stop moving? Feet, 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 feet. Now Navon's able to pull, wrap around. He's able to cover up that backer. And that backer thinks he's going to make the play like that. He's not going to make the play like that. And now it comes down to your three guys on the backside to make sure no one chases the play down from the backside. Corey Gaynor just puts a hand in the A-gap to help Ja'Kai Clark take that over. Look at Ja'Kai's strain. Mm -hmm. Look how good that is. Look at his balance and movement. Keeps the base. Great base. Corey cuts off the, the Mike linebacker. DJ Scaife has a backside defensive end. Nikosi's in a throwing posture because we know we run RPOs mm -hmm. off of something like this as well. And then here's that, here, there, Mama, there goes that man again. K.J. Osborne cracking on the safety, which brings in the corner. So K.J. is really, by cracking, has blocked two men. Got Guess what? By blocking two men, there's no one left. There's no one on the perimeter of the Georgia Tech defense. And then we know Cam Harris can run. He runs to the safeties tackle. Does this is our favorite thing? We t we always mention get off the ticks. See these the hash mark ticks. Right. You know we call this line right here a cliff. You don't ever want to run off the cliff, right? So we cut back to the center play, and it's it's a it's a small thing, but look look at the yards he gains making the cut right there. You know that's maybe 15 more yards of real estate by just doing what by not you know how many running backs you see just go out of bounds. You know we pride ourselves on Miami that not going out of bounds unless it's a end of game end of half situation. Cuts back into the field of play, secures the ball, and that got us going, gives a chance to win the game there at the end. And, you know, late into the screen, you see players coming in stressing that they can still make a block. You no, know that that no was what was happening. There, there's, there's absolutely no doubt. I mean, there's, there's Corey Gaynor. I mean, guys are, guys are straining. Guys are fighting for each other. And that's what it takes to get a run game going, you know. And then this last clip I'm going to show, this is action overtime. This is uh, pass protection. You know, because again, our pass protection has been getting better and better mm -hmm. all year. This is a key. This is going to be the key third down throw in overtime to Brevin Jordan. But again, I want to watch all five guys right here really doing a great job working in unison. So let's just go left to right again. Let's start it with Zion, the left tackle. He's got a really tough job for a true freshman. Okay, same thing. Great base. And this is where he has great balance. The guy tries to power him inside. And see how Zion can reset right here. See how, see how he, 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 re, he resets his body. Does a great job. Look at the bend in his knees. Yep. You know what I mean? Go back to Navon <coughs> on the inside. And again, nice job by Navon. The guy, the guy tried Handle to spin. spin yeah. He's got he to reset his hands, which he does. You know? And then and then Corey Gaynor is coming over here. He's going to help Ja'Kai on the nose guard first. Bang. Great stalemate there. And then DJ Scaife, same thing. Does a really nice job. And look at this beautiful, clean pocket for Nikosi. Great job. nikosi has got his eyes down the field. He's trying to manipulate this linebacker right here. He's got Brevin Jordan running the dig in behind him. Anticipates the throw right in between the two linebackers. Even just a small thing like Cam Harris. He understands he has, he has the stripe of his helmet. He's checking his blitz responsibility. His blitz responsibility does not come. And this is no small thing. By Cam getting out here, what's he doing? He's influencing this linebacker to go with him. Which does what? That opens up the space between the two linebackers. And that's the advantage. If we have to keep Cam in to pass protect, tap out on our offensive line, well, guess what this linebacker might do? He might drop straight back, so you may have better pass protection, but you're not going to have a guy open. So this is a great job by all five guys being able to do their jobs. Coach, also you love to see the throwing lane that appears naturally when everybody's it's doing natural. their job. That's exactly right, and that's usually how it happens. And the ball is out, and Brevin makes a big-time catch, takes a big hit. Takes a big hit. But you know what? And that's, that's what big-time players do in big-time situations. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Breakdown segment with Head Coach Manny Diaz.